The Aishin T3A soldering station has been called the JBC killer. Is that true though? Well, I have a JBC soldering station here. Let's find out. Hello and welcome. If you follow my channel, you might know that a few months ago I purchased these Aishin T3A T245 handle to replace my RUE uh, hack or knockoff soldering station. I purchased the T3A with my own money and I thought I would show you uh, a comparison between the T3A and the more traditional soldering iron like my RU is. By the end of the video I showed you that the T3A is very capable in driving this type of cartridges, it's very powerful, so much more powerful than my previous soldering iron and I was uh, pretty happy with the performance but I also discovered some uh, severe flaws with the design of these station. First of all, I would say the inability of the station to keep a stable temperature with some of my tips, depending on the situation, depending on the firmware, depending on many parameters. But most importantly, we discovered that the station massively misbehaved when soldering on grounded PCBs. And then in my previous video, I know some of you might be thinking, why on earth should you solder on a grounded PCB? The PCB should be unplugged. However, there are so many scenarios where you might have ground on your PCB that you are soldering and I discovered this very problem when I was soldering on a PCB which was sitting on a grounded preheating board. Yes, you could try and insulate all the points where the PCB is touching the preheating plate to insulate the PCB from ground, but you shouldn't really have to do that. Another real-world scenario is that you might have your oscilloscope connected to the uh, PCB you are soldering on and yes, you could try and remember to unplug it every time, but again, not really very practical. You could have a signal generator connected to the PCB, again, you can try and remember to unplug it every time, but that's not really what you want. But the most annoying scenario which I encountered recently is desoldering electrolytic SMD capacitors. I used two soldering irons for that. I used the Aishin and I'm also using my old Aoyui, which, guess what, is grounded. And on some capacitors, not all of them, don't ask me why, the Aishin loses control with the thermocouple inside the tip and you end up with temperatures up to more than 500 degrees, which is completely unacceptable. At some point, one of my genuine JBC tips became blue in color, uh, probably showing m much more than 500 degrees, and I don't want that. My tips, my JBC tips are expensive, and my PCBs are precious. You know, I don't want to solder with 500 degrees full stop. But what I've discovered more recently after publishing the video is that the iShun is actually leaking voltage. And that's probably the reason why it misbehaves when the PCB under test is uh, grounded. The iShun is leaking approximately 1 volt when the heater inside the tip is being energized. And while I completely understand that this is unlikely to cause any damage, I don't want that to be a possibility. I think a soldering iron should not leak any voltage, full stop. I don't want to think that there might be a scenario, a rare scenario, where the voltage coming out of my soldering station is damaging the PCB I'm working on. So reluctantly, because I'm doing some work with my soldering irons, I ended up purchasing a JBC and I completely understand that there must be something in between the price of the iShun and the price of the JBC in terms of like clones or alternatives or anything. I just didn't feel like I wanted to invest any more time in selecting a soldering station. So I broke the bank and I purchased this JBC, which once again, I paid myself 100%. So this is not sponsored by PCB, but it's actually sponsored by PCBWay, the sponsor of this video, more on that in a minute. And as last time I thought, why not doing a quick comparison between the Aishin T3A, which is called the JBC Killer, and a proper genuine JBC coming from the UK's, one of the UK's official distributors. So in this video, I'm gonna skip the unboxing and going through the menus and everything. I'll just give you my honest opinion about the stations and we'll do some, you know, hands-on tests to see how they perform. 
Now, a couple of uh, general considerations about these two stations. The JBC is based on a linear transformer, as you can see, it's much bigger and bulky and heavy, uh, while the iShun is based on a switch and mode power supply, so it's much more compact. Now, one advantage of the iShun is that the cradle is actually detached from the unit itself, and this is pretty convenient in my opinion, because the JBC is pretty big, it's quite a large footprint on my desk here, and the stand here, the cradle, cannot be detached from the station, so the whole station has to be close to me uh, on my workbench, while the iShun can be on a shelf, and I can have just a cradle on my workbench, uh, which is something I really like. The JBC comes with a sponge and a metal wool for cleaning the tip, while the iShun uh, from, uh, from the manufacturer only comes with the wool, the cleaning wool. I added a little bit of a sponge in here, but there's only space for one thing. You can't have both while the JBC has both. Again, not the end of the world, but it's worth mentioning. The iShun Cradle can house five tips, while the JBC can only house four. Everything else is more or less identical. The hand pieces are more or less identical, even though the Aishin one failed on me some time ago. It's just glued in here and the glue failed. Uh, I need to put some extra glue. And also the Aishin doesn't have this little uh, rubber cap. And I understand that's to prevent fumes from going into the handle, eventually potentially causing some connection issues. Now, one thing I've noticed is that the JBC is taking a little bit more time to uh, power up and boot up than the iShun. It's not a deal breaker, I would say, but it's worth mentioning. I'll show you now. Now, for these tests, I've set the stations so they read exactly the same temperature on my thermometer here, and I'm going to use exactly the same tip, which is a JBC Chisel 1 2. Point something millimeters. Now let's begin with the coin test. I feel it's not really a real world situation, but it gives a good idea of how much power these stations can deliver to a tip. And bear in mind that the iShun is rated 200 watts, while the JBC is only rated 120 watts. As usual, I'm going to apply some flux on the coin and I'm going to melt 10 centimeters of solder. I've marked 10 centimeters here on the solder itself. And then in post-production, I'll do a side-by-side -side and we'll see how these stations are performing. As I said before, both tests are gonna be done with the same tip, it's that JBC chisel one. Now, some PCBs this soldering station won't have any problem soldering on are these PCBs from PCBWay, the sponsor of this video. If you need a PCB manufactured for one of your products, I definitely recommend PCBWay. I've used the services in the past, as you can see, and I was always impressed by the manufacturing quality of the products. And don't forget that PCBWay also offers 3D printing, metal sheet fabrication, and much more, so it's a great help for all your projects. You can take a look on pcbway.com, the link is also down below in the description. Let me thank PCBWay for sponsoring my videos, it's really a massive help and it makes these videos possible. So thank you very much PCBWay, and uh, now let's go back to the review of the station. So far the iShin seems to be doing very good. Now, real world scenario, this is an Xbox 360 motherboard. I'm gonna solder those two solder joints, which are still factory. So that means lead-free solder and a massive 
ground plane and we'll see how the stations are performing. I'm gonna help a little bit with some uh, uh, leaded solder just to add a little bit of flux and something. These are uh, pretty old joints and it's gonna be difficult to transfer heat and I don't want the oxidation to be a factor into this test. Let's give it a go. So the Aishin seems to be performing really well so far, it's really being a JBC killer. Now let's get to the issues I highlighted in my previous videos, which are the ones that uh, persuaded me to get a different soldering station, and particularly the voltage leak. Now since my previous video I've discovered the Aishin has uh, about one volt of voltage leak through the uh, soldering tip. Now I could show you with the oscilloscope with my multimeter, but the easiest way is just to show you using a speaker. This is a very simple speaker. One lead of the speaker is connected to ground, the, one, the other one is in my hand, and when I'm touching this lead with the Aishin soldering iron, So clearly there is a voltage coming out of this thing. And as I said earlier on, one volt is not too much, but uh, I think it's one volt too much. Let's put it that way. I don't want volts, electricity coming out of my soldering iron. Now JBC claims maximum two millivolts at the soldering tip with the station. Is it going to be true? Let's check. Now I'm not sure whether two millivolts would be enough to make the speaker emit some sounds, but that means that there shouldn't be any noticeable voltage coming out of this uh, tip, as JBC says. Now what about temperature overshooting when it comes to grounded PCBs? This is just a, it's a CRT neckboard, it's one I've been using for this test. I'm gonna touch one pin here and let's see what happens to the temperature. I'm reading 530 degrees and to me this is completely unacceptable. You know, we can argue as much as you want about don't do this on a grounded PCB, it's just sometimes ground is in the way, as I said earlier on, and this shouldn't happen. I don't want this to happen. By the way, I am using software 1.33, I believe the reason 1.35 out now, which has replaced the 1.34. 1.34, when I tested it, it was behaving exactly the same because this is a hardware flow of the design of the station. It's just that the display would not reflect the change in temperatures. So the display would still say 350 degrees, but in fact, you would get 500 and some degrees at the soldering tip, which is completely unacceptable. Now let's do exactly the same with the JBC. Same PCB, same pin, and also I'm gonna check the temperature straight away to make sure that the software is in any way hiding any design flaws as well. The temperature is stable at 360 degrees. Don't see any spikes on power at all. Let's check the temperature real quick. 360 degrees. There's no overshoot. Or if, if there is, it's not measurable. There we go. 
Now let's try and do some measurements here. I got my multimeter in the voltage, DC voltage mode, and I got a sponge in here so for to trigger the heater inside the tip. Now if I measure the voltage, I see zero, and if I try and cool down the tip at the same time, I still see zero. What about AC? Because obviously this is going to be like pulses, I guess. I'm not sure about the JBC, but just in case I'm missing something here. And there is nothing. Actually, it goes to zero probably because the, the tip is grounded, so it, it just brings everything to ground. Now let's test the ice in the same way. So I've got the sponge in here. I'm in DC mode. And I'm measuring something like 0.3 volts. Now, obviously, this is easier to see with the oscilloscope because these pulses are very short and it's more like AC than DC. But I'm seeing uh, 0.3 volts in uh, DC mode. And let's check on AC mode. I've got 0.5 volts AC, but in reality, if you check with your oscilloscope, you're talking about one volt peak to peak. So the, the pulses are about one volt peak to peak. Now let's check the current which is flowing from the step. So I've got the multimeter set to current mode. I'm in uh, DC mode now. I'm reading about 0.8 amps in DC. And we're going up to 1.7 amps in AC. Again, to me, this is completely unacceptable. We've got one volt peak to peak at one point. It can be up to 1.8 amps. It's just not something you're expecting from your soldering iron. Again, my older hack or knockoff obviously doesn't have, doesn't do anything like this. And the JBC, of course, doesn't do that either. So what is the final verdict? Do I recommend the iShin T3A? Well, based on all my findings and my, you know, several months experience with it, I do not recommend the T3A. You should never have voltage at a soldering iron tip. I don't care whether your PCB is not going to be um, grounded or whether it's not relevant for the average days. You should never have voltage at the tip for that very reason. And also because Aishin basically ignored me completely. I contacted their support several times. I asked for, you know, an update on the situation. Is this resolvable with a firmware? You know, am I seeing something? Am I doing something wrong? At some point I told them, look, this station doesn't work for me. Can I maybe have another? one, one which doesn't have this problem, they completely ignored me. So because of all these reasons, I do not recommend the iShin T3A. And yes, I do appreciate that if your PCB is not grounded, uh, this station more or less outperforms the JBC, which is like, you know, what, four or five times more expensive than the T3A. But from my point of view, one volt at the soldering tip is one volt too much. I don't want voltage at my soldering iron when I'm soldering my PCBs. As I said earlier on, I'm sure there is something in between these two stations at a reasonable price that behaves as well as the Aishin without these uh, voltage leakage at the tip. Um, unfortunately, again, I need to do some work with my soldering iron. I didn't want to risk anything because of this voltage uh, leakage and I ended up with the JBC. I'm sure there's something in between. My channel is a small one. I can't really afford to keep buying stations and try them to show them to you. So apologies for that. Today I'm showing you what I have because I need it. I'm not saying the JVC is the only alternative to the T3A. I'm just saying the JVC works as expected. The T3A does not. So I hope this review was somehow useful. If it was, and if you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate a thumb up down below and uh, consider subscribing to this channel if you like this kind of things and all my retro repair computers and tinkering with electronics. Do leave a comment, I try to respond to them all. And uh, I thank you for watching, I wish you a great day and I hope to see you again here soon on my channel for my next videos. Thank you very much and goodbye. Bye-bye.